Hello and welcome back to Pandemic Playground with Dave. So once again, we have another context video for you guys. So to explain what's going on in the last four time lapses of the series Surviving Europa. All right, so a lot has happened in the last four episodes of the time lapse. Just keep in mind that's roughly three hours of gameplay per time lapse. I say roughly because sometimes it's four, sometimes it could be a little less depending, but it's more or less three, three or so hours. So the first thing we did, of course, I believe going back to episode five, we built out this little port hangar for our ships so we can have them connected to the connectors. And of course, I made everything to be a bottom connector, meaning like on the sh ships here, bottom connector, bottom connector and so forth. So this is my drone that I initially made. And this one is to collect unknown signals as easy as possible. Nothing really to this one except for using these cool cylindrical columns on the small grid version with some magnetic plates and that's pretty much how i collect the unknown signals this whole thing is done by remote control running with hydrogen engine batteries small hydrogen tanks so there's like a total of four of them here or even more so i put them all hidden here put a little bit of a spoiler with some lights so just a small little random design that i just want to try out it has a whole bunch of hydrogen thrusters the new ones you make it look different and of course the different color do it as well so put a bit of a neonish green color with some white and that's what this thing is i mean remote control very simple to use i mean you can easily just remote into it or press this button here to turn on the the thrusters but i think this thing actually ran out of batteries it looks like not entirely sure how that ha happened um Turn it, yeah, turn it back on with the hydrogen engine, luckily. And we probably need to connect it back to the connector. So, as easy as possible, like I said before, this is the thruster button. We turn this on to ramp up thrusters so we can fly it. Or we can just easily rem remote into it and fly it. So, we can just control it from here. And it's equipped with a few cameras. So, you can see um, pretty well out of it. And you have the front camera, and then you have a backwards camera here. And I do have the mod where you can pan your camera a bit more, and it's clear camera as well. So that makes it a little bit easier to kind of see things. So easy enough to land this guy and try to connect to it right there. So we're just going to connect to it. Actually, I have to do this first. I have to kill the thrusters, then attach or lock in the thruster lock in the connector that way I don't turn everything on or off so at least we have that all set up let me just turn this off okay so that should just kind of charge on its own so yeah a very basic basic ship here nothing too too crazy and it's, it's more than enough to pick up unknown signals and then dump it into the grinder pit which is a very very simple grinder pit that has a sensor here to detect either enemy or neutral small grid once you drop it here, so the grinder will just turn on and start grinding. Of course, not the most efficient because it sticks up a little bit and it doesn't grind every little piece down. But with this little shield here, at least it doesn't fling out like it did uh, in the first build of it. So that kind of coincides with this little guy here. I haven't really used it too much because, you know, based on where we are at currently we don't necessarily need the unknown signals too much but you know when in the spare time i decided to just go grab it anyways but for the most part it's kind of useless so i might take this out maybe maybe not maybe expand it to something bigger if, if necessary because eventually maybe i could take down some of these um kind of like patrolling ships and freighters and things like that you can maybe grind it down with a bigger grinding pin of course not this one because this one's too small then right after that, we created somewhat of an observation tower. There are stuff inside as well, which I do plan to stick, you know, things that you don't normally need to see in here, like a programming block. Who needs to see that? And it's all piped up to the very top too for some air or some oxygen. And we made it. We made this bit of a elevator system by digging straight down. So if I pop this guy on, You'll see it's a very simple, simple elevator system where we just put a lot of pistons downwards here to go up. So then that 
fulfills a simple little elevator system that goes all the way to the top and one of the pistons the last one it's on a maximum very 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 small maximum here so then it reaches pretty much square to the top where you can just walk on it and walk right through so that's an easy system to do but it looks pretty cool it's not too bad i was thinking of doing other things like the hinge elevator and things like that but on that's gonna kind of go bad because it's not a guaranteed thing to go up with that type of system so kept it with the most simplified version ever which is just a piston shared inertia go up and down done deal from there and this observation tower does have the oxygen and the oxygen is actually inside down there in the room before and in here got a nice nice view right up here as you saw just before where you can see mars from europa you can see other planets too um right there i don't recall what planet that is that might be triton yeah i think that's triton um but i'm not too too sure and of course the sun that rotates kind of somewhat alien planet over there um as you see but this thing here is actually controlled with a script where you can use the mouse and keyboard to move it and it controls at the very same time the antenna so any way i rotate the antenna is going to rotate so you may have seen that in the time lapse here and there where it rotates a bit because that's me just controlling it um so for an example I'm go in spectator mode so you can see me slightly down there but if you see that i'm moving the control seat down there it also moves the antenna and i can move this up and down left and right whichever direction that was just aesthetics reasons just to do that so when there's an unknown signal i just target it this way and then kind of fly and then go right into remote control access our grabber and then just fly and fly for the unknown signal that's just a little bit of aesthetics kind of thing to do there not much of a realistic thing to do but it kind of works out from there i think we created this guy here which some of you said it looks like the general grievous ship i actually haven't seen that i haven't seen star wars in a bit so i, I don't know how the I, how the idea kind of mimicked what the ship looks like i honestly just really a lot of times just build stuff on this on the fly just build it as i go i have like these simple ideas and then it just evolves into like bigger things so this thing here is all powered by hydrogen and hydrogen thrusting and it's a very simple thing to be honest it's a you know bit of a conveyor with rotors advanced rotors and then you spin it with uh welders here grinder there or vice versa the biggest problem i do have with this is that i did not calculate for the length of the large thrusters to reach one of these arms here because it is burning it down a bit which is not ideal as you see here this is pretty much toast so i do need to extend this eventually i probably need to extend it by one more of these conveyors so it's gonna make it look a little bit bulky forward but it should be okay and yes um adding a thruster down here kind of helped it from dropping too much uh, i don't know why it really drops uh, I, although yeah i thought it was kind of fixed but it, maybe it's just a weight issue because there's no thrusters over there and all the upward thrusters all in the back so it just drops that way this was a fun build this one's really interesting um yeah in terms of the thruster itself burning things we should take account for about seven blocks forward and i think this is about five which is why it's burning it one two three four four or five right here so that's why it's burning it so if i do if this is four add another one of these is three so that's gonna be seven distance so it should be okay if i add one more um forward but it's just gonna look a little wonky a bit so i'm gonna have to find a way to design it a little bit better so probably look forward to that later on i i definitely just can't keep it this way because it's gonna burn down and waste materials um but one of the best ways to do it is actually to put this more vertical or more of a slant and it won't burn it but for now um i kind of burned the, the grinder down here and there so i had to repair it once in a while too which was you know waste of materials so this thing is powered by hydrogen tanks as bef as the other one with the large tanks and two hydrogen ta um, engines as well just to get the battery for it 
And this one's a little unique because it does have a large cargo container here. And then it's followed by our, our, our smaller ones, the medium cargo containers right here for material. There's one specific dedicated one for ice, which is right here. So this one is connected by the small ports. So you can't put like some certain components through it because it's too small of a port basically. And this thing carries a decent amount, which is not too bad. Um, it could probably use one more large cargo container. Um, and if it could do it, I probably would put it back here for the weight and you use it that way. So this thing has been helpful and I'm going to continue to use this. But once again, just going to extend it out a little bit more so it doesn't <laughs> kind of burn and destroy the welder grinder. So once I put that thing in place, that's where I'm able to create a lot more and weld things a lot faster than doing it by hand. Although you still see me do it by hand once in a while as well. So this here is kind of my initial take on separating a system other than the solar panel is having a hydrogen farm here. So this hydrogen farm has uh, hydrogen tanks, uh, new round industrial ones, which looks cool. And it's all piped from the bottom. And it all has O2 H2 generators here just for fun. And another thing just for fun is these exhausts um, with fire. Technically, you shouldn't have to fire there. It makes no sense. But it was just, just for um, aesthetics once again. And in the time lapse, unfortunately, the graphics um, couldn't pick up the fire for some reason on that account. But I have to find a way to work that out eventually. And I think it would be cool if I could time it or put a timer block or something is when you hit one of these buttons it actually creates a stockpile or tells these tanks to stockpile so i think when i hit stockpile it should light up the exhaust on top i think that will be more a little bit more better or more aesthetically pleasing in that sense so when i hit that big red button it hits stockpile that's when the exhaust should go flame and then when it's off then it should um be off or, or be smoke or something sim or something else in that in that sense that way that way at least we know it's what's on and what's off and you know what <laughs> and you know what maybe i'll just do that right now so we would just need a timing block whether it's a small grid or a large grid doesn't really matter but let's just do it as a large grid it's not a big deal and we can put it in here so this one we could put it anywhere here put it right there and put it together we'll call this the stockpile mm, no delays or anything that that's fine okay so i actually could program it all here if i wanted to and where's the oxygen the oxygen is here actually the vents so you can see the vents up here and it does go through the top because it's not completely sealed so either doors open it's gonna completely mess with that but anyways we can set up the actions so we need the groupings first so we need the tanks so the hydrogen tanks are these guys here that's fine and then we need the exhaust exhaust pipes right so from here we have setup actions so we'll take the groupings of the exhaust being um i guess on and off so maybe we do hydrogen tanks as stockpile on and off perfect so right now what we should do if we do it that way is to take the exhaust and turn it off first because right now it's toggle on and off stockpiles off so that should be off all right so from there we take the button which we have multiple buttons and so i gotta figure out which is which which I believe it should be this guy here. Perfect, this right here. So instead of taking the block, we're gonna have to take the timing block, which is this one here. And we could do trigger now or start. I think in this case, trigger now, we don't need it to wait or anything like that. So we can easily do it that way. Okay, so let's just test it out. Make sure everything's working pretty fine. All right, perfect, it's off. So the moment I put the big red button on, it lights up with flames and it's stockpiling. Perfect. The so stockpiling is a little bit dangerous and janky here and there if you have things connected. <laughs> like these guys here. They're just going to take out all the hydrogen from these tanks, which we don't want because then we end up having 
uh, no fuel, basically. But we have a lot of ice that we can create a lot of hydrogen in these tanks. And it's six tanks for it to store all that energy or hydrogen for our ships and also for the base. Eventually, I do need to grind these guys down because it stockpiled off of these two initially. And we got to move some of this stuff and kind of turn it into more of a base. This hole is just going to be there for a while. If we are desperate for more ice, which I think we might be. Yeah, so this one's a dedicated ice cargo container. We're, we're out of it. We should have kept a lot of the ice that we mined with our mobile miner. But it was too heavy, so it couldn't really grab anything. So sometimes I do come back and forth to this guy and get some iron, get some ice, or whatever the case is. For the most part. I mean, I could always use this mosquito rover to grab a lot of ice also and bring it back with, with ease. No issues whatsoever. I actually haven't even touched these guys in a long time. Um, but yeah. So after building that with that grinding welding machine, I eventually ended up with very little materials. So as you see here, I was missing a lot more things. I had the iron because I was able to get it from down there. I was missing silicone, nickel. Cobalt I haven't farmed for yet, and we haven't really got much silver gold because we didn't necessarily need it, and there's platinum somewhere around too. But for the most part, right now, we got a whole bunch of iron as you see here, and a lot of materials uh, already queued up and auto-producing, so we are good for the most part with materials now. So after getting the silicone, nickel, we might need to get some more cobalt eventually for metal grids uh, because the metal grids we definitely need for like thrusters or hydrogen thrust or like atmospheric thrusters which I was planning to do on my mobile base but I ran out of materials so I had to scratch that idea but yeah so after creating you know all this craziness that so we have our power system here we do need to do a turbine farm this is hydrogen farm we kept it a little bit further away just in case and we gotta just start creating different areas. So we need a refining area, a, a cargo area, and all that stuff eventually too. But I think I just need to farm for a little bit more materials. So that's gonna be um, cobalt. And then we should be able to do a lot more in this space. So a lot of this space is gonna be used up for separate areas. And not sure if I'm gonna keep this as the base ground. Um, eventually it's gonna kind of like stick up a little bit because you know this moon is not flat so we're gonna have to figure that out too maybe we just keep the floor as is um, so we can walk on it or drive around it whatever the case is so yeah we, we just got to build around or further away from each other this is a little too compact and and we do need to change out or make these things further or keep them here or make it make them even higher for, for example and what I mean is the solar panels. So our drill system is the last thing we did. And that's going to be found right over here. The last place I placed it was for getting platinum actually. Which after testing it, it didn't work out too well. So the platinum was about 54 meters down as you see here. And it did not reach that platinum per se. So if I drop down, you'll see that I made a little hole just to get some platinum. And it missed it by maybe one or two. No, one piston would have done it. One additional piston <laughs> would have made it down there um, and picked up the platinum. And of course, this system is a bit weird, but it was something I just wanted to try. So a lot of my builds that I do are kind of different <laughs> from your like traditional process or traditional ways. Yes, I should put the cargo containers up here maybe and connect it to the um, ones going down. And then you have more pistons going downwards and go even deeper and grab like those platinum down there. But I just had to, I had this thought in mind to kind of put some drills with the cargo containers, bring it down and see what happens. And it honestly, it worked out pretty well. The only big problem I have is that this thing does get caught on some of the walls when it goes down a little too fast because of the kind of like checker pattern here. So um, it would work a lot better if they didn't have the checker pattern. It'll be a lot quicker too. 
but it doesn't need to be quick because I don't have a ship that can actually lift this whole thing up when it's full with ice. So when these two things are full, these two carbon containers are full, there's no way that I can bring this up <laughs> with my current ships. Of course, I'm using small grid ships too, which is the biggest issue. But yeah, I can't bring this up, so maybe I do need to transfer this and maybe build some wheels. I'm thinking about building some wheels for it. And what I'm probably going to do is kind of like work from here downwards, maybe diagonal to put some wheels on it. I don't know. Uh, kind of would prefer it to do like a truck with a flatbed to turn this thing horizontal, which we've done that before in the surviving Pertam and didn't go too well. But those are some ideas or just keep it um, with the hydrogen thruster or or keep it with a ship to maneuver it, which I could just build a large grid ship, to be honest, into it and maybe do vector thrusting with it. So we're not to carry too much thrusters. But because we didn't have enough materials previously, that's why we built the small grid version of it, of a ship to try to pick it up. I honestly thought four upward thrusters would have picked it up with it being full, but apparently not. <laughs> so that is uh, probably somewhat of an interesting thing there. All right. So yeah, this was a weird design. And yes, it's more efficient to put it up, put them out here. So like, say, if you put the large car cargo containers right here, one here, one here, or even on top, or even to separate where the pistons are. So like this one, this piston could have been on the bottom of the large cargo container. And this one could have been attached kind of to the side with some conveyor tubing. And that way you could have how many pistons would you have going down? You would be able to have one, two, three, four, maybe five going down. And that would pick up material a lot better. Um, but this was just the funner way of doing it. But I think eventually I'll just change it just to see how that's going to go. But this was a very interesting and weird idea that I just had in mind. And it actually kind of worked out okay. And it does go pretty deep and it's pretty balanced in terms of like the weight of everything. So it's not terrible. So that was kind of the point is if I put everything on top and it's going to, once it has all that material, it's going to be super heavy on top, which is fine also. But then we got to find a way to pick it up and keep the weight on everything as well. But it shouldn't be a problem. I think it's going to evolve to being kind of like the shoulders of the whole system eventually. And then that way we go deeper for the platinum here. Um, but yeah, that's this is a weird one, but it just had to do it and see what happens. So when I built that, I was using the grinding welding machine or ship to pick it up initially, which worked out OK because it has a decent amount of thrust or upward thrust. You have two big ones, um, three small ones. No, more than that. I have four five small ones uh, to pick it up. And without it being with anything, meaning no ores or anything, it was easy enough to maneuver and move it around. So, you know, I was thinking maybe, just maybe, this weird contraption or ship using all large hydrogen thrusters will be able to pick it up. It has four upwards thrusting and um, two on each side, basically. Forward, backwards, left and right. Just to pick it up and maneuver it. So of course, when it got too full, mm -mm. Not able to move it whatsoever, but I did install some large cargo containers here so we can easily transport things out of it. And this one is a, a funky one. <laughs> the main reason I made the forward thrusters or no, backward thrusters for sticking out like this so that it sticks into the uh, mining st um, station, the mobile mining station um, without any problems and not burning anything down. So it's a weird build. It does have O2 h2 generator oxygen tanks batteries a whole bunch of hydrogen tanks and thrusters as you see here and it looks okay it's not the prettiest thing in the world but it's operational it moves really well it carries the four cargo containers with ease even though when they're completely filled so that's a good plus and that's all that went on in the past four videos once again a lot more to do here some, as you, some of you may be asking what the end goal is here. Generally, I'm just building a lot of stuff. Is is there an end goal? Potentially, yes. I think the end goal would be once I finish building out this kind of city-like area with different areas. So as we mentioned before, there's like the hydrogen tank area. We're going to have a refining area, grinding pit area, maybe a garage. So this is kind of my sandboxy 
build as I go type of um, place here to make some random stuff and time lapse it and share it with you guys. So that's kind of what I'm doing with this. And, and it looks like you guys are enjoying it. And I hope you guys still enjoy it and continue to enjoy it. Of course, let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts are and how things are going. All right. So once again, tons and tons of things left to do. So I'll get back to the time lapses and see you guys next time. Bye.